How hard is it to catch five tournament caliber bass with no help, no practice on a public body of water? Let's find out. Today we're on 10 Killer Lake in Oklahoma. We're facing some pretty tough conditions, overcast skies, no wind, and it's about 32 degrees outside. Highs are gonna be in the low 40s. Water temperatures are also in the mid 40s, so the fishing could be pretty tough. In general, in late January, early February on Lake 10 Killer, the weights and tournaments here are pretty top heavy. You're gonna have one or two bags around 20 pounds, then maybe third or fourth place might be all the way down to 10 or 11 pounds, and the rest of the field may even not catch any fish. So we're in for a challenge, but 15 pounds in the boat today, but we are gonna have a little bit of help in the form of the brand new Deep Dive app. We're gonna be using Deep Dive app to pick all of our patterns today, hopefully find 15 pounds of fish. Got him. There we go. Good one. Finally, got one of these fish to bite. On a little swim bait, just like the deep dive app told me. Solid little fish right there. She got a smallie on. A nice smallie. There we go. Beautiful fish. It's a small mouth. Beautiful. They actually run with a large mouth here on 10 kilo a lot of times. And that is just a beautiful fish. Got that fish on a little mega bass three inch spark shed finesse swim bait. We're fishing here on a little rocky spot. There's a rock pile. It's right on the edge of one of these ditches that feeds this creek. There's shad here, we're in the middle of the creek. And I mean, the deep dive app called it on the money. Only been fishing for probably 15, 20 minutes and got on some fish right away. And there's a bunch of them down there. Nothing crazy there, just a two pounder, but that is number one for the day. And I now have a pattern to run with. There's a bunch of fish actually on this little rock pile that I found. And this is the first creek we pulled into and there's a lot of spots like this all over 10 killer. Now that we're on the board, let me explain the process I used to catch my first fish. To start planning my day, I pulled out the deep dive app and changed these four settings. These settings allow you to customize the strategies that are recommended to the current conditions and your fishing style. I first selected the water clarity I wanted to fish. On 10 killer, I always do best in clear water, so I went with that. Next, I set the water temperature to the water temperature that I found on my graph. I then selected that I wanted to fish in windblown areas, though it's not gonna make that much of a difference because we're dealing with pretty calm conditions right now. And I also said that there's no vegetation here in Lake 10 killer. After changing these inputs, the app recommended five strategies based on the real-time weather that's being pulled into the app and the inputs above. All of these strategies are based on tournament results from professional bass fishermen, so all these patterns are proven and have caught fish on similar lakes across the country. The pattern that seemed the most appealing to me off the bat was the finesse swim bait pattern. This is one of my favorite ways to catch fish in clear water in the winter time, so I'm going to click on it to get more details. The first piece of information the strategy provides is the general location you should be looking for on your lake. Because Lake Tankiller is a highland reservoir, it's going to recommend a location within a creek. However, if you're on a river system or a natural lake, these location recommendations will be adjusted to the type of lake you're on. They're not always going to recommend creeks. In this case though, I need to be looking in the first half of creeks. This is based on seasonal patterns and the information from the tournament results that these strategies are based on. Based on this recommendation, and the preference I set earlier for fishing in clear water, we can already eliminate 80-90% to 90 of 10 killer lake before we even start fishing. The way we can do this is by looking at 10 killer on Google Earth. You can actually identify the water clarity from a Google Earth image, and if we take a look where the clear water is, it's going to be in the lower third part of the lake. The mid part of the lake has stained water, and the upper end has dirty water. Therefore, we only have to worry about fishing this bottom third of the lake. Next, we only need to be fishing in the first half of creeks. 
This is really important because we can basically just break the lake up into the creeks that are available on the bottom third of the lake and then break those creeks in half to only fish the first half of those creeks. We've now eliminated a lot more water, and instead of having to fish the entirety of Lake Tenkiller, we only have to fish these small zones, which is really only about 10% of the entire lake. And I can feel confident that any time I spend graphing or fishing in those sections of the lake is going to be a productive time. After the location recommendation, the app will recommend different types of structure that you should be looking for in those zones that we identified earlier. There are several structure recommendations listed because there are often more than one type of structure in each of these zones. For each structure recommendation, the app provides example contour map images of each type of structure so you know what to look for on your contour map on your specific lake. In addition to structure, the app also recommends the type of cover you should be looking for and provides example sonar images if you're fishing offshore or aerial footage of specific spots and different types of cover if you're fishing up shallow. Finally, the app provides a recommended boat positioning and casting depth, as well as some equipment recommendations and a retrieve video to give you all the pieces you need to start using this pattern. Got him. There we go. Another rock pile here in the middle of a creek. Literally the exact same pattern. Got another good smallmouth here. We changed areas of the lake because we couldn't find any more fish in that one uh, little spot we were in, but we were able to duplicate that pattern in the exact same type of area. Found another rock pile down there. Oh, that fish choked it. Another good smallie right there. That one's just a little bit better. Beautiful fish. I mean, look at that fish right there. And there's a bunch more down there. I saw seven or eight on the graph. A little mega bass spark shad, quarter ounce it is happening, guys. It's awesome. I actually spent a lot of time eliminating water. This is like two hours later after that last fish catch because I was trying to figure out if those fish were more on the main part of the creek or main part of the lake or if they were further back in the creek. And the first fish I got was almost kind of dead middle of the creek. And I tried a bunch of different stuff and just couldn't get it going but it seems like these fish are actually kind of in the dead center of those creeks, not near the mouth, not near the back. And that fish right there is two pounds, 10 ounces right there, solid keeper. And if I can get this pattern rolling guys, and now that I know kind of exactly what to look for, we might be able to put a good bag in the boat. That's what I'm talking about, love those smallies. Beautiful smallie right there. Let's get him back down in the lake. Awesome, that is the way to do it guys. And again, all I'm doing is duplicating this pattern that was working on the other part of the lake. I'm just basically finding the middle of these creeks. I'll show you here on down imaging what the spot looked like. It has a couple of dots down there, but side imaging is what really pops this area. If you take a look at side imaging, you can see a nice rocky vein. And we're not fishing off of a rounded point or any obvious structure. We're literally in the dead center of these creeks. This is what I would consider a ditch. And it's just feeding this pocket here. And literally that rock pile is in the dead center of it in 20 to 25 feet of water. And there's some fish sitting down there and I am just slowly reeling that little swim bait. Got him. Good one. Damn that fish. Off this point here. Good one on the jerk bait. Says you need electronics to catch fish. <laughs> Stay on there. One hook on him. He's got a couple hooks in there. Stay down, fish. There we go. Keep her right there. Well, guys. Electronics actually stopped working. I just got a new dedicated uh, cranking battery. I think the battery went bad or something. And I had uh, no other option but to start fishing shallow. And I picked up a suspending jerk bait because I actually went into the deep dive app 
and changed up the water temperature. Well, our temperature rose from 45 degrees this morning to 48 degrees, and a suspending jerk bait became a shallow water pattern that I thought I could get some bites on. Because I had no electronics, I thought I might as well just go check out some of these shallower areas. And I just pulled up on a uh, channel swing right here, kind of just goes into this open point and threw that jerk bait over the top of that channel swing point. So it's kind of like a shallow flat plus a channel swing, which is two of the structure spots the app recommended. They kind of came together here, which is perfect. And there's also a little rock transition, which is also recommended by the app. So we got a lot of different good stuff going on right here. One pound, 12 ounces, just a pound and three quarter fish, but nice one right there. Getting back down in the lake and, oh, sorry, I got stuck on my glove. Uh, we'll get that weight locked in here real quick. We don't have a giant bag right now, but we still got plenty of time to catch some fish. And despite the mechanical issues, we were able to make this work. I mean, literally every graph in my boat is dead. I don't even have contour lines. I uh, basically am just going off of what I see on the bank and the example images that are in the app. Picked up that uh, Megabass Vision 110 plus one jerk bait. Just let it suspend out there, not for too long, just for a couple seconds, and that fish ate it. So it was pretty clutch bringing the deep dive app today because it helped me come up with a pattern that I didn't even think about throwing, but because I changed that water temperature in the app and I was able to adjust that, I got a new pattern and I got a new fish in the boat. So hopefully we can keep this rolling and catch a few more. Got him. There we go. Fish. There we got him. go another fish right there <laughs> changed it up a tiny bit here uh, went to a spinning rod because I actually had a fish that was just nipping it and I couldn't get that full-size vision 110 jerk bait or the full-size vision 110 plus one to get him to bite it so I actually went down to the vision 110 plus one junior this is the junior size and the plus one mega bass I always carry a bunch of different jerk baits in the boat just like with that swim bait deal the fish were biting it weird this morning with that 3 8 ounce head. Going down to the quarter ounce was definitely the deal. And the same thing here with the jerk bait. He went to a little bit smaller size and he committed to it. So let me get this thing on hung real quick and then I'll weigh him. Solid fish right there. Two pounds, eight ounces. Nice audible. That's the second fish in a row basically here. I'm actually kind of fishing off this really flat point that has a creek that Creek channel swings in against the point on one side, and then it creates this big flat area. And that fish was right in that transition from the seeper part to the flatter part, just like that last fish. And that spinning rod deal lets me get that bait a little bit deeper, that little, uh, you know, junior size bait, a little bit deeper, about the same depth as that plus one uh, standard size. And I'm starting on a six pound test, and that fish absolutely crushed it. Beautiful largemouth right there. Look at that guy back down there. But I cannot tell you guys how awesome it is to see that deep dive app in action working. I you know, normally don't fish up shallow all that often, and I took all the strategies that are in the app when I was developing it from actual tournament patterns, from proven strategies to catch quality fish like that one there. And a lot of times I go into the app and I see strategies that I would personally not use or, or haven't used that often, but because I took the data from other fishermen you know, who compete in tournaments, won tournaments, or finished high in professional tournaments with these patterns, that has allowed this app to recommend strategies that just catch fish. And you know, it's really cool that I'm even learning from my own app. I did all the data behind it and everything, but you know, it's not just me picking patterns for you guys. It's an actual algorithm that develops these patterns, which is so cool. And I'm learning stuff from it even right now, because again, this is not what I'd normally be doing, but based on what the example images were, what the app was telling me, that's what I did. And I've already got two fish in like 10 minutes. The other point is literally right behind us where I just caught that last one. So I am so jacked up. This is so cool. Got him. Fish. So 
talking about. Choke that thing. It's number five right there, new pattern. That's what I'm talking about. Just uh, was working my way over to this point that I wanted to fish a jerk bait on and I looked at the app and it showed that the fish might be biting a uh, medium diving crankbait as well. So that was one of the patterns that showed up this morning. It's kind of been showing up all day. And that bait right there is just a Spro Rock Crawler 55. Basically, I was just using this kind of like an in-between pattern. There's a nice channel swing bank right here. And I was just reeling it down there, trying to work my way to the next point. And I knew that pattern had potential because it was down in the app. And that's the third pattern of three of the five that have been in the app have produced fish. I haven't tried the drop shot or the jigging spoon, which is recommended earlier in the day, but three of five is pretty good since that's the only three I've tried. This is not actually a keeper normally on 10 killer. The fish on 10 killer need to be a little bit bigger than this, 16 inches. But just for my challenge videos, I think it's fine to do a, uh, five fish limit of just any size and you know if i was in a tournament obviously this guy wouldn't count but i'm also out here without any practice and without uh, a full day of fishing i say i have eight hours of fish but really when i'm filming i have about six i have to do all the drone work and everything but basically a little pound 10 ounce fish nothing crazy but that is our fifth fish of the day and i am proud to have him we haven't figured out a big fish pattern yet but we have a couple two and a half pounders in there and we're up to 10 pounds so five fish for 10 pounds is not bad at all especially in january on a typically a tough fishery this time of year in really tough conditions. So very happy to be getting bites, consistently finding new patterns. Deep Dive app is definitely helping me out today. And that was kind of just a bonus fish off of a pattern that I didn't even really dig that deep into in the app. I just kind of pulled out the crankbait because it said to have a crankbait tied on today in my preparation and paid off right here. So let's keep cranking down this bank and see if maybe we can get another good fish off a of jerkbait on this point up here. 10 pounds, 12 ounces. We didn't complete the catch 15 challenge, but we did put five nice fish in the boat. I started the day fishing that mega bass spark shad on offshore rock piles. I was getting some good quality fish and it was a pretty consistent pattern. And honestly, I feel like that was the way that I was going to get 15 pounds in the boat. Last year, Jason Christie was out here. This is one of his local lakes. He had 19 pounds of smallmouth, And I feel like I was getting close to figuring out the key to getting some of those bigger smallmouth in the boat. Unfortunately, about two hours in the day, my electronics completely turned off something happened with my battery so I had to call a complete audible thankfully I had the deep dive app because I am not that much of a shallow water fisherman I rely on my electronics a lot but I was able to pull up some patterns that past tournament winners have used on similar lakes this time of year and one of the patterns that popped up was the deep diving jerk bait or the shallow diving jerk bait on either of those rounded points or on some of the channel swing banks within 15 or 20 minutes of blowing up my first point using some of the example images. I caught my uh, first fish up shallow with no electronics on the Mega Bass Vision 110 Plus One jerkbait. Caught another really nice fish on the Vision 110 Plus One Junior. And then I put a few more fish in the boat with that medium diving crankbait. I wasn't able to get that many more bites. It honestly was kind of a grind up shallow, but I was able to put four fish in the boat and kind of salvage the day. I wish I would be able to stay offshore all day because I was really on a roll, basically getting a fish every hour after finding out exactly where those fish were. But I was able to use the app to get multiple patterns going, which is awesome. And it's something that I'm really excited about. If you guys are interested in checking out the Deep Dive app, you can find it on the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store, or you can go to our website, deepdiveapp.com. There you can download the app, and it's a really great tool for figuring out a starting point for where to fish. You saw being in the video i was able to eliminate 80 to 90 percent of this lake just with the recommendations in the app and seeing which patterns were working in each section of the lake based on water visibility then i was able to pick the baits that were the most effective in that time frame and i was able to catch fish on all three strategies that i tried i didn't give every strategy a try just because i wanted to 
give these baits enough time to actually see if they would work. Normally I recommend giving each pattern at least two hours. And I had about six hours of fish today, so I gave about each bait two hours and it worked out pretty well. So hopefully you guys learned something from this video, not just about the app, but also just about how to find some fish in the winter time and some different patterns you can try out. Definitely check out Deep Dive App if you're interested and also subscribe to the Fish Moment YouTube channel if you wanna see more Catch 15 challenges. Hopefully if my electronics are working in the next one, we should be able to put 15 pounds in the boat and keep this challenge rolling. So thanks again for watching. We'll see you all in the next one.